This is the examination of the hidden human condition. You're listening to the Hidden Killers Podcast. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. We are talking with former FBI, retired FBI, Robin Dreek, and Hidden Killers contributor, going back to kicking it old school all the way back to earlier in the year on this one, making some observations about none other than Alec Murtaugh getting the love letters in prison. I started to see some of those through some FOIA requests. Yeah. Uh, we've seen a shirtless Alec Murtaugh in the last uh, week or two uh, from his uh, videos or his video chats that he's able to have uh, with whoever he wants to when uh, they call or he calls them. He looks very comfortable in prison right now. Uh, and as we heard last week when we listened to that phone call, uh, audibly, he still seems like it's business as usual for Alec. Yeah, you know, I, I keep looking at this. I don't know if anyone ever saw the movies. Um, Denzel Washington played a, a pilot in a movie called Flight. Okay, yes. And yes. yeah, it's a it's a really great movie about a, a, a closet alcoholic that wound up saving a plane. Again, it's it's fictional based on, there's a couple um, readings in, it's called The Big Book and Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, it's very similar things where he'd hide, he hid his alcoholism and wound up saving all these lives but he flew the plane completely intoxicated he was high on coke and finally at the end of the movie you know he's running from all these lies the entire movie he's lying about this lying about that fighting this innocent this and everyone's hailing him a hero and finally at his final uh, not trial but his final hearing with a national transportation safety board he says i can't tell another lie and he finally owns up and they send him to prison mm -hmm. And he finally found peace because he got sober, he reconciled, and he just found peace. And when I saw Alex Murdoch and these photos, and, and like you said, you listen to that recording, it's, it's almost like looking at someone that finally got a chance to let go of the crazy of his life and got sober. I mean, that's, that's the only thing that really struck me was he finally seems calm. Mm -hmm. and accepting of his life as it is and isn't that kind of strange i mean it just that's the only thing that really struck me was he looks like someone is finally accepted potentially now granted it could be in complete denial as well and i'm again being a horrible armchair quarterback on this mm -hmm. one but this is someone just said like psychologically i'm just seeing finally someone is just like huh i'm okay now yeah because i can do no more damage to myself the world around me and I, it just looks like someone's like resolved to this is my life, and it, you know what? It's okay now. I'm sober. Well, I, I'd almost compare it to to like a wild animal that's been caged, yeah. where where you know after a while their instincts to you know kill anything that's coming at them, you know they kind of eventually go away, uh, and they're more okay. Yeah, here's more people coming by to look at me, uh, but they're that that urge that uh, that menacing. Uh, way that he had about them, uh, you know, you know, the kind of it, it tones down. But I mean, that's what we're seeing on the outside of those that he's interacting with there. I right. do wonder if behind bars, uh, the interactions he's having with other people, although very limited because he is still uh, kind of self-confined. Uh, but if in time, you know, th there's going to be more schemes of Alec Murdoch that you may only end up hearing through jailhouse stories of, of scheming within uh, with other inmates. Yeah, no doubt. I, again, it, like I said, from the limited optic we're getting, I, I just I have I have found it pretty striking. Yeah. And yeah. I, I guys, individuals like him, he this this is where he needs to be. He needs to be locked up forever because yeah. he can't function in society, obviously. And maybe, you know, maybe this is his thing that you know I don't know. But it, yeah. I, I'm like you. I found it really striking. Um, his behavior is just placid almost. I mean, just like very, it's, it's like he's away at a, on a vacation. I mean, isn't that, yeah. that's just, wow. I think, he, <laughs> and maybe he is mentally away on a vacation because if yeah. you were to come to the, the surface on this or come back to land and see the uh, nuclear explosion that you just set off for everyone in your life, I think you'd keep going back to the water. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and for being, years. Yeah, and probably forever because I don't know that one can mentally face that to its extent and understand 
what one did and be able to, to go forward. That would just be extremely difficult. What, yeah, and, that, and, not, and not just from the murder of his wife and son, but mm-hmm. the devastation he called financially yes. to all these people. And, and most likely, in order to do that damage, all the bullying he did throughout his life and his family did. I mean, just the destruction mm-hmm. in, in the community around them that they impacted. I mean, that's, yeah, that's a lot to face. What's your take on the Mallory Beach settlement that we saw come out uh, just recently? Uh, it was between 15 to $20 million uh, she was rewarded. Uh, it coming from Parker's uh, grocery store. This is where uh, his son uh, bought the alcohol, but uh, was using his brother's fake ID or his brother's real ID. So when it was scanned, it came across as a valid ID. The two look very similar. Uh, had there not been death involved, nobody would know anything about this, uh, that they ended up selling alcohol to a minor. Uh, but them being fined that amount, when we look at the video of what took place, Parkers really didn't do anything wrong. I, and they're really not equipped or have any legal right to ask for any more identification or or ways of proving one's age other than an ID. And they were provided an ID. Uh, they, of course, I guess could have just said, well, maybe this is fake and refuse service. But if it looks like it's valid, I, I don't really see how they intentionally did anything wrong. Yeah, I don't know. You know, you know, legally, well, first of all, I'm I'm extremely gratified that the family got something. For I am that, too. So. I am too. But I'm, I'm um, like more of this should be coming out of Alex's pocket if there's anything yeah, left versus. Yeah. But- yeah. So I was, you know, again, just looking at this, the only thing that strikes me is, you know, the first impression was good on the family. Then you're thinking of that poor business um, that got hammered by it. But then, you know, I was was reading that it was the insurance company that's trying to do this because the insurance company is going to be the one that pays it out. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are trying to have restitution to a family and you want to award them money, I wonder if going again, as I don't know this, I wonder if going into the calculus is like who actually has money that can actually give the restitution. Yeah. And in this case, it might have only been the insurance company mm-hmm. um, that did it. It'll raise the rates, if not put that um, liquor store out of business, but at least it's not going to bankrupt these individuals. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe again, I, it's pure conjecture, but if I was looking at as a reasonable person trying to award a family restitution that they so are deserving of if, because I mean, you can't bring back um, yeah. their child, you know, where are you going to get it from? So I, I maybe yeah. that was part of the calculation there. And I agree. I mean, I, I believe the family certainly deserves restitution. It just seems, you know, the, the true culprits in here was, uh, was Alex's son, Paul. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and I, I agree and go, go for restitution if you want to. Obviously, it's not going to bring anyone back, but I think you're certainly entitled to it when something was done wrong. But at a certain point, too, like you, you can't just get it from anybody just because they exist, even if you look at the logic of this and go, look, they really did do their job. I mean, you're, yeah. but the insurance totally. company, the insurance company did uh, simply state that uh, we don't want to go to trial with this, uh, mainly because uh, we're going to be lumped in with Alec Murdaugh, and it's already horrible enough that we're lumped in. So our best case scenario to get out of this is just pay this off and be done with it, which uh, from a business standpoint, I get. It, it just it, it doesn't seem like necessarily this was justice done because I, I don't think the person that was punished or the the company that was punished is the one that really should truly be receiving this punishment. But at the same point, if Alec doesn't have anything to pay, you got attorneys, they're going to go for where money can come from. And they certainly did find it. Yeah. And I'm with you. You know, when you look at the video of this, I mean, it was reasonable and that's what the law is. A lot laws are placed for reasonableness and, and you know, it was reasonable to what they did. You know, I don't, I don't, Boy, it's one of those, you know, it's those, as they say in Star Trek, the Kobayashi Maru, the, the no win scenario, you know, mm-hmm. they, they're they damned if they do and they're damned if they don't in this situation. They did legally everything they're supposed to do. They they even by reasonableness, it looks reasonable because of the like, you know, because of the likenesses of mm-hmm. everyone. I mean, and so how do you you want to hold people accountable for underage selling alcohol sure. at the same time they reasonably did everything they're supposed to do as as a yeah. mess. I mean until we in society have another system for this for businesses right. to poke holes in a better way than just looking at a piece of plastic 
Um, I, I don't know that you can expect a business to do much more. They can't really. I mean, legally, they, they would be infringing on other people's on people's rights if they were to go further than what they're legally required to do. But ends uh, yeah. ends because of the family. Yeah, they might have recognized. I mean, he, these the, this family is pretty striking in their look with their red hair yeah. and their. I mean, they just are striking. They that. They might have even known him coming in and say, oh, we better not say no to the Murdochs. I mean, it, I mean, there's a lot of external pressures that might have been part of that as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And to hold someone at fault for uh, a, a crime syndicate of a family. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm with you on it. Uh, I feel like they they kind of nabbed the wrong thing there. But I am happy that, yeah. that the Beach family did reach a settlement. You're consuming the Hidden Killers podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers podcast dropping soon. Press subscribe now.